Hey, what's up, guys? Subscribe Phoenix back with another video today. Today is May 30th, the 30th day of May Madness. And today I'm going to be doing a video from kind of my desk area today. And I want to talk to you guys about how to convince your parents to either let you have your first lizard or snake or whatever, and or having them uh, let you get a couple more than you already have. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now the first thing to note is you have to be prepared. So when you go to your parents, don't just go like, mom, I want a snake, or mom, I want a lizard, or dad, or whatever, you know, you need to be prepared. So you say, hey look, I've done all this research, I've spent the last two months researching, or last couple weeks researching, and these are my notes. And you have to actually have notes, like say, basically just have a care guide but don't take it from one source like all my care videos that should not be your barometer for getting a new animal you should have several several different resources you should have pages and pages of notes that you can take and how to keep care of them and what are the differences between this website versus that website and there's so many different nuances that you guys need to go into to prove to your parents that you can actually keep an animal. A perfect example is when I first got Striker. I got Striker when I was eight years old and I had been interested in animals, in reptiles specifically, for like three or four years before that. However, that's what my parents said to me. They said, okay, well, we'll let you get one, but you need to prove to us that you're ready, you're willing, and you're able to take care of a leopard gecko or whatever animal that I picked. Right off the bat, snakes were a no-go. You guys that watch the channel right now know that snakes are not my parents' thing and that they just don't like them at all. So I don't even bother trying to get a snake because I just know, like, if I said, hey mom, can I get a snake? It's immediately no. Same with tarantulas. Uh, they hate tarantulas. Me, personally, I probably would never keep one either. Who knows, right? Like, it's just certain buttons you don't want to push and you just have to map that out and know what buttons to push, what buttons not to push. That's the second, uh, I guess, point in having this. And the third is actually make sure that if you're young or uh, like young as in you don't pay for it, then do save up your allowance, prove to your parents that you will take care of it properly and that it's worthy of their investment. And if there are any parents out there watching this, make sure before you let your kids have a reptile, amphibian, whatever, that you know how to take care of it. The parent's duty is to actually have the full responsibility of the reptile. Now, yeah, obviously you wanna teach your kids responsibility and planning and kind of, I guess, financial balancing with a pet, but if they forget to feed it, if if they do anything, that's at your back. You're the one gonna be paying for vet bills that have to go. You're the one paying electricity. That's on you. The parents should definitely understand and know how to take care of the animal and be fully willing to take care of it in the absence of their kids or if their kids lose interest or whatever. You know, there's, I mean, your parents, you know your kids, chances are they go through different phases every three months <laughs> or sooner. You have to be wary of that as well. So where do you find all these resources that I was talking about? YouTube is a great resource, however, everybody has a different opinion on what substrate to use, what the heating is, what the lighting is, everything like that. So I strongly recommend finding uh, classes, whether it's at your zoo or a local presentation or books at your local bookstore or online to find more grounded uh, research on the animal. Now, of course, I try my best to provide the most updated research in, in animal husbandry. There are people out there that can provide that for you, but it's just not that common. A lot of people out there are just set in their beliefs. They choose to totally ignore the facts, and that's what you end up with. It's just a video on YouTube for people like you, the newcomers, to watch and believe and fall into that hole as well. When it comes to getting your first reptile, then you just want to have the best, uh, most reputable breeders. You do not want to start off with something from Petco, PetSmart, Petland, any of those large chains because they just get their animals, they totally neglect them, and they don't care if they have parasites, if they whatever. To them, they're just a number that needs to be sold. It's not an animal that needs to be cared for, given the proper attention. At the end of the day, they just don't care. They want to sell you something. They're not in it for you. They're in it for themselves and their own monetary profit. So try and find a local breeder. Go on Facebook. 
go to any like uh, forums, whether you're getting a chameleon or leopard gecko, crested gecko, whatever. There's forums out there that will help you find reputable breeders and you should definitely follow through them. Now, if you're in Canada, there's plenty of places that will ship. Um, I know there's local places all over the place that will ship across Canada. If you're in the States, there's even more of them. So it's, it's really not that hard to get a reputable source. However, a lot of people don't know that they exist, so they go to their local pet co, pick up a leopard gecko, and it dies in three days because they haven't been fed, they don't have heat, they're kept with seven other ones, and they're stressed out. That's what I recommend you guys do. Just make sure when it comes down to getting your first animal is that you get a reputable breeder from a reputable source. Furthermore, they should be able to tell you the proper care, what they've been feeding, how often they're eating, when they hatched, and what their lineage is if they're a breeder and they have the parents. So there's tons of benefits to looking for local breeders and I strongly recommend that you guys check them out. So that kind of wraps up the video guys. I know it was kind of a weird random one, but I hope you guys learned something. The tips to take away is know what you're talking about before you go to your parents. Prove to them you have notes. A side note for the parents, make sure you understand how to take care of the animals. So in case your kids can't take care of it forever or they lose interest, then it's on your back. And when getting your first pet, look for a reputable breeder. They should be able to tell you all the information that you need. And that wraps up the video, you guys. So thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. I know I said this yesterday, but I'm pretty sure tonight there will be a live stream with my buddy Reptiliatus or Dion. He was busy last night, so I'm hoping that we can get it done tonight. If not, uh, look forward for tomorrow. The, the video will be a thank you to you guys. Maybe I'll get some shout outs of people that I always see in the comments. And uh, yeah, it'll be a crazy day. I'm hoping to maybe do a couple hour live stream and just hang out with people tomorrow. It depends what's going on though. So if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave it in the comment section. And if you made it to the end of this video, leave how old you were when you got your first reptile. With that being said, have a great rest of your day. Remember to click the subscribe button and play Ding Dong Ditch with the doorbell next to it. That way you get notified whenever I post a video. We'll see you guys tomorrow. It's the end of May Madness. We'll see you guys.